So Arsenal drop points for the third consecutive game. Dejected Arsenal players on the turf at the Emirates ahead of that game against Manchester City on the 26th of April. Lee Dixon, former Arsenal player, Farrah Williams in the studio with me as well. You've had a few more minutes, Lee, to digest what's happened there. What will, what will Mikel Arteta be saying now? Because, it's, again, it feels like a really important team talk, doesn't it? It's very difficult after a game like that for him to calm his emotions down and it'd be easy for him to, to run off with it and go, you know, say too much after a game. I think it's... I think his coaches, if he's got, he, he's, a, he's, an, he's an inexperienced manager himself. We have to remember that. He's only been in the job five minutes and all of a sudden we're expecting him to behave in the perfect way like a, a, an experienced manager like Wenger would or Ferguson. And uh, so he's got to kind of just calm himself down a bit before he talks to his players. But he'll be certainly saying, look, it's still in our hands if we get a win against City and we win our games. And he'll be saying that, He'll be saying to him, whether the players believe it or not, he'll be saying, City, City are not, they're not going to win every game. They might slip up. We've mm. just slipped up three games on the trot. Um, they'll look back at these three draws and go, that they've just had and go two of them. The Liverpool game, they'd have took a draw before the game. Mm. But the other two against West Ham being 2-0 up there and then bringing this game back to 3-3, they'll think we should have got over the line. But they give the ball away too much tonight. As mm. simple as that. And that's a nerves thing. That's simple... The occasion, you know, because they, they haven't given the ball away all season, really, yeah. apart from the last couple of games. It, it could have been so much worse. That's got to be the positive, Farrah, right? Because they found themselves 3-0 down to that Chaletta Sar uh, <coughs> header in the, in the second half, 3-1 down. And, um, you know, to come back and rescue a point. But again, sort of mistakes. And they'll be looking at this one and analysing what went wrong. Yeah, and they'll have to analyse because there was a lot of mistakes. And, and as Lee mentioned, there was a lot of nerves within this young Arsenal team. I think... Uh, sorry, I think based on based on the, the the outcome of the game, I think they have to take a lot of positives from it. Mm-hmm. If they would have gone away with nothing from this game, it would have been even more disappointing, even more of a lift Arteta would have had to give his players to bounce back for Wednesday night, which is a, a huge game, which mm. everybody's been speaking about for numerous amount of weeks now. So I think the fact that they showed that character to get those two goals back in that you know period of time towards the end of the game, I think they have lots of positives to take from that. They'll be tired. Their emotions, as Lee mentioned, they will be all over the place. It was a roller coaster of emotions today, you know, for the manager and the players. And I think you know maybe silence. Uh, from the manager in terms of going in there would probably be better and reassess it overnight and they go back in have a day off probably tomorrow and then they go back in over the week and they start again and focus in on Manchester City. Yeah, and look, all the goals came from mistakes which were so un- yeah. unlike Arsenal this season, Lee, and, and the third one as well. It's nerves. You know, you, you, you do things on the pitch like this. Party gets the ball, he takes one touch too many, they lose it. The fight's there, there's no problem about that but it's little things like this. You give the corner away, you don't... Get in front of the defender, uh, the attacker there, holding, just lets him get in front and then he flicks it to the far post. Look at Shinchenko. He's got his man, he's looking at him, he's got his arm in the air, he's looking straight at him and then goes to sleep. He's not a brilliant defender, Zinchenko. He's brilliant on the ball. Positionally, with the ball, Arsenal use him to their strength, but without the ball, we saw he gave the goal away against Liverpool. He let uh, Trent get past him. And there again, you've just got to be alive. You have to be alive being a defender, whether you play midfield or not. That's your job. Keep the ball out of the net. Yeah. And in defensively, in defensive set plays, that back post position that Sinchenko's yeah. in, it's such an important position. You have to be switched on. He looked, he looked organised. He was in a set position. That one second of switching off, yeah. And it leads to a goal. Mm. But it's such an important position in, in a set piece to defend. We've, we've seen Arsenal fight to the end on numerous occasions this season. And the Aston Villa oh. game obviously springs to mind, Bournemouth as well. And, and you know, they're not down until it's over. And no. Martin Odegaard leading from the front with his captain's armband on. Yeah, I mean, you know, here he is now. He picks it up and he's got one thing in his mind. As soon as he's on his left foot, you've got half a chance of a brilliant cross or he'll hit a target. And his feet are so quick and there's men behind the ball. But there's nothing he can do about that. It just dips nice and early in front of the goalkeeper and it's in the and then all of a sudden you're thinking could they possibly get back into this game and the way that the crowd got behind them at this point the, the energy was with the Arsenal team Para. yeah no it wasn't and Odegaard he, he was key in that in terms of the energy that he brought he led you know as a captain and obviously here you can see Saka coming up with, with the the equaliser, but but he led in his second half with his performance, and you know there's different types of leaders and characters within the, within the game, and he certainly for me has demonstrated how to be a captain in terms of his performances because he took the game by the scruff of the neck in the yeah. second half when they went three one down and really tried to make things happen for this Arsenal team. 
this and the keeper here fumbles it into a, a good area for Arsenal and a poor area for Southampton. But it's Saka that comes up with a good serve and gets them on level, so level points. When that goes in, we were all... That's it. They're gonna. Well, I certainly was. I was like, we, we still have got the in- stoppage time at that yeah. point. Yeah. And then when that eight minutes came up, it was like, well, here we go. We've yeah. definitely got the impetus now. Southampton looked out for the count, but they couldn't quite get it over the line. Yeah, still had chances, didn't they? Yeah. Trossard and Nelson right, yeah. right to the end. And you know, you were believing. You were thinking that they could have had another couple of goals in those eight minutes. I did believe. Yeah. You didn't want me to believe, <laughs> but I did believe, and I was expecting the crowd to almost draw it into the net. Everybody was out out of the seats, and that. Also, the thing is that the emotional uh, strength of a crowd at this point, you can gain so much as a player in those last few minutes. We've seen you know, the great United sides of the past and some of the Arsenal sides that I played in go to the 90th minute and beyond and get you know, last-minute winners and it just wouldn't go in for them. It just felt like for Jesus, especially tonight, it just yeah. wouldn't sit no. there for him to have that one chance. He had half chances, the ball was sitting there, but he didn't quite fall for him uh, this evening. As you mentioned, we've seen a few chances here and a half chance here from Nelson, but I, it just wouldn't go in for Arsenal. It just wouldn't go in. It's one of those days. And, and as I say, I think they're lucky to come out with a draw and they'll be pleased with that draw, for yeah. sure. That's, yeah. a mass, that's a massive point for Southampton, by the way. Mm. You know, and, and they'll be looking at that now. They'll be in the dressing room disappointed. And obviously they would have took a point before the game, but they'll be looking at that going, we put absolutely everything into that. And they changed the tactics a little bit. And uh, I think Matt Holland said in commentary about mm. them sitting back a little bit too much and inviting Arsenal on. You kind of not got much choice when you're mm. going against a team that's going to try and win the league and they're 3-1 down. They're going to come at you. So you have to you have to kind of get back towards your own goal a little bit. But they just, yeah. just let it slip at the end. But they're still a brilliant point for them. And, and the run that Arsenal have got, Lee, we talked to me before the game, but, you know, after City, they've got Chelsea, they've got Newcastle, they've got Brighton. And not, I'm not trying to make your, your evening any worse, but the last no, Arsenal you win are, at the Etihad I mean, <laughs> was a long time ago. I mean, you were nearly playing. It was eight years ago. Yeah, <laughs> but the, th- the thing is, you, all those fixtures were set last June. They knew who they had to play. Yeah. They, they've had a brilliant season so far. You can't get away with not playing anybody. You have to play everybody twice. Yeah. So th- there's parts of the season where you have an easy run and they pick points up then. This is the tough bit now and, and this, is, this is how you win a title. Is you your belief go- wavering though now after that tonight, after, t- after three consecutive games? Be honest. Oh no, yeah, absolutely. If you were a betting person, which I'm not, mm. you would say it's City's title all day long. But mm. they've still got that game on Wednesday and this team, if they can get over the emotional tiredness, the physical tiredness does, won't bother you at this time in the mm. season. You're tired, you're tired from Christmas onwards, you know, but the emotional side of it, mm. they can get over that, they can beat City. We yeah. know that. We know they've got the ability. But you would expect City to have a little bit too much for him. Yeah. But listen, we didn't expect that tonight, did we? Yeah, and that's, that's probably the difference, isn't it, between a, a point and, and losing the game, though, isn't it? Which um, we, we shall see, because I know you're going to be there on Wednesday night, Lee. Uh, but we can be joined now by the Southampton captain, James Ward-Prowse, <clears throat> uh, who's at the Emirates for us. Um, James, I don't know if you heard Lee Dixon talking there about how that feels in the Southampton dressing room. Incredible performance, an amazing Premier League game of football. But does it feel like a, a defeat for you? A little bit, yeah. I think we would have taken the point um, before the game for sure. But, um, you know, to come here and to to play the way we did with bravery on the front foot, we were aggressive. We took the game to Arsenal. You could definitely feel the atmosphere and there's obviously a good feeling around the crowd and the stadium. And, um, you know, to silence that, you know, felt good. But we knew they'd come on strong. You know, um, they're at the top of the table for a reason. And, um, you know, we had to, to, to dig in deep towards the end. And there was an important part of James Ward-Prowse's body. I'm not sure what part it was, but you got, you got a bit on that Reese Nelson mm. effort right at the end, didn't you? Yeah, there are a few blocks going in there. Um, I think when, you, when you're up against a team like Arsenal and they're chasing the game, obviously you've got to put your body on the line and you've got to you know, put everything towards winning the, you know, winning the game and um, thankfully managed to get a good block on that one. What does that do to, to your dressing room? I, mean, I don't mean just at the Emirates in general, you know, in this relegation battle, because you could have been off the, the bottom of the table for the first mm. time in, in a long, long time, James. But it must give you so much belief that you can go to the leaders and put in a performance like that. Yeah, I think to come here and do that is great. But I think the challenge now is to take that forward in, uh, into the rest of the season. You know, there's no point coming here. Uh, you know, the motivation might be easy because you're against the, you know, the, the league leaders. But the challenge is now for the rest of the season to, to play against every team like that. And um, I'm sure if we do, we'll, we'll give ourselves a good chance of staying in the league. James, it's Lee Dixon. Is, is that been the biggest frustration for you this season? The fact that you can turn out performances like that? I, I, was, I did the commentary for the Leicester game and you mm. played ever so well against Leicester. And I came away from that saying, if they play, keep playing like this, they'll stay up. And is that the frustration for you throughout the season? 
Yeah, it has been. You know, we all know that football and sportitude and the application against uh, Arsenal Top is terrific, and that's what we need going forward now. Three points, James. It's doable. Yeah, um, you know, that, that point could be huge come into the season. Um, there's still a lot of football to be played and, um, you know, it's not over by, by any stretch. So a lot of points to be played for and we'll make sure we give ourselves a good chance. Well done, mate. Yeah, James, Cheers, man. really appreciate you speaking to us. There we go. There you Thank Africa you. Captain James Ward-Prowse after an incredible game of football uh, at the Emirates. And just looking at their fixtures, Farah, you know, they still do play Bournemouth. They've got Nottingham Forest. They play the teams around them. Right, they've got some tricky games in there in Brighton and, and Liverpool and, and Newcastle away. But they've given themselves a hell of a chance, haven't they? And, and probably not even more so with the point, but just with the performance and the belief. I think I think Lee's mentioned it. I've watched what Southampton m- myself a few times this season and they do perform well. Mm. It's just they don't seem to get over the line in terms of getting those points on the board. But you mentioned there they've got Bournemouth in their next game. So they're at home to Bournemouth on Thursday night. So that's a big game for them, a big six-pointer, you'd say, at this time of the season. And then they've got Forest and Fulham. So teams that they potentially could pick points up from. So they do have a good run, a couple of tough teams within that. But they've shown some fighting spirit tonight to go to Arsenal and perform the way they did. They've shown there's some spirit within that team that potentially could get them out of that relegation. Yeah, and in terms then of the title run and when it comes to Arsenal and Manchester City fixtures, this is what it looks like. We know that they meet on Wednesday, but look at those games that Manchester City still have to play. Semi-finals against Real Madrid. They could have a Champions League final and an FA Cup final. 13 games potentially. And Arsenal just have those seven games. Very quickly, Lee, will that go in, in Arsenal's favour, the, the fewer games? I'm just going to say it's not over yet. That's all I'm going to say. Because there's some tricky games there and a lot of games for City. But Wednesday is, is pivotal to say the least. Yeah. But I, I, I think there's going to be another couple of twists. Yeah. Farah? I'd rather not give any predictions. <laughs> I, they, they, they've been terribly wrong from the start to, to near the end of the season. I haven't got nothing right yet. So <laughs> certainly my predictions have been very poor. Well, there we go. It has been a hell of a night at the Emirates and it should be a cracker as well at the Etihad Wednesday. See you then. <laughs> 